The last video in the playlist looked at the operating system managers and we saw it had a memory manager, a file manager, a process manager as well as a device manager. And these managers decompose the structure of an operating system. So all of the software for controlling the memory was put into the memory manager. All the software for controlling the file system was part of the file manager and so on. To understand an operating system and the managers we've just seen is really to understand the workings of an entire computer system. Because the operating system manages each and every piece of hardware and software. Now a computer system we've already seen consists of software, i.e. programs, spreadsheets, databases, computer games, whatever they may be. As well as the hardware, the physical machine and its electronic components. All of the devices, for example, that are connected to a computer form the hardware of that computer system. The operating system is the main controlling piece of software that manages all of the hardware and all of the other software. To be specific, an operating system controls every nanosecond of processing time, every section of main memory, every file and every device. In addition, it controls who can use the system and how. In short, the operating system is the boss of the computer system. Each time a user sends a command, the operating system must make sure that the command is executed. Or, if it's not executed, it must arrange for the user to get a message explaining the error. With respect to operating systems, it's important that we note the following. An operating system does not necessarily execute the command or send the error message to the user. It does, however, control the parts of the system that do. So in other words, if you connected a device to a computer and for whatever reason that failed, the actual connection process failed in some way, it's quite feasible that the device would inform the operating system, I failed and this is why. And then the operating system would use the information passed to it from the device to inform the user of the fail, i.e. the error message. Let's return to consider the managers that exist within the operating system. And we can see that the first one is the process manager, which is responsible for allocating processing time, processor time, to the various processes that can run on an operating system. We have the memory manager, which typically is responsible for deciding where in memory and keeping a track of where in memory you have the various programs that could become processes. And we have the file manager, which controls what's on a disk, whether it's read-write, read-only, executable file, etc. And we also have a device manager, which controls all the devices which are connected up to a computer system. So when we talk about a process manager, we really need to reflect onto the central processing unit. When we talk about the memory manager, we're really dealing with the main memory, the silicon memory, the random access memory. The file manager, well, obviously that is responsible for the programs, the files, the data that exist on a disk, for example. And we have the device manager, which has the keyboard, the printer, the monitor. The disks themselves are actually controlled by the device manager because when you plug in an external USB hard drive, for example, the device manager says, whoops, I've got a, an addition here, I better take care of ensuring that this becomes part of the computer system. Here we can see all of the managers that operating systems have. And remember, they have these managers so we can decompose the complete piece of software that forms the operating system, because an operating system is a complex piece of software. And we decompose it at this level, as you can see here. But it would be a mistake to believe that all of these managers somehow work independently of each other. They don't. So for example, you would typically have a relationship between the process manager and the memory manager. A typical arrangement of cooperation between the process manager and the memory manager could be as follows. The process manager is currently executing a particular application. Now the time slice for that application comes to an end. So the process manager now needs to execute something else. So what it needs to do is to cooperate with the memory manager because it will tell it where the other application is in the memory, if you like the start address of that memory that contains that particular application. Now there will be data structures controlling it, there's queues and so on. But we're really 
really talking about the cooperation here at the high level. So there's a definite cooperation needed between the process manager and the actual memory manager. Now there typically would also be cooperation between the process manager and the file manager. For example, we will have a process executing and it comes to a part of the code that wants to access information that's on a disk. So there needs to be communication between that process and the disk and that communication will take place through the file manager. So for example, if you opened a file for reading, where is that file? Well, it's somewhere on the disk. Where on the disk? Well, the file manager will tell you where it is on the disk. And of course, there will be data structures to support this. But here we're looking at a high level view and we can see that the process manager and the file manager have to cooperate when we have a operating system working with applications. Now, of course, there is a cooperation between the process manager and the device manager. And a typical example would be the process manager is running a particular process and the user comes along and plugs in something to the USB or to a device of some kind and the operating system has to be informed of this. Now the thing that does the informing is the device manager and it informs the process manager, oh the user has just plugged something in here, you better do something with it. And of course it could be a USB memory stick and the device manager will say there's a memory stick here and of course the operating system will tell the process manager just stop doing what you're at the moment and just service this device manager will you and of course what will pop up is something that might say do you want to open the files in this USB stick do you want to run them so the operating system will take care of that kind of message to the user but of course there had to be communication between the process manager and the device manager as part of that particular process. Now there will also need to be cooperation between the memory manager and the file manager. Now a typical example here would be we might have an application that is far too big to all be loaded at once into the random access memory that the memory manager is actually controlling. So when there is an attempt to fetch the code and execute a machine code instruction that's not in memory, it says, oh, I haven't got that bit of the program in my memory. I'll go and get it from the file. And you have something called page faults occurring. We can talk about that again. But essentially what will happen, the rest of the program is on the computer disk. So it has to be brought into the computer's memory. So obviously there needs to be cooperation between the memory manager and the file manager to allow this to happen. Because the file manager knows where it is on the disk and the memory manager knows where it wants to put it in the computer's memory. So there has to be cooperation between these two managers. Of course, cooperation between the memory manager and the device manager is essential when you're dealing with operating systems. They need to communicate with each other. For example, let's just say you have a situation whereby a user plugs into the USB an external drive that contains data. Now that data needs to be transferred to the memory so the processor can work with the data that it was expecting. Of course, the device manager would have to work with the file manager to assist this. So here you can see we have a relationship between more than one manager here. The processor says, I need some data, goes to the memory, the memory manager says, well, I ain't got it. Oh, that's on the device. The device manager is plugged in because the user has been given some message. Hey, I need some data. Oh, I know where that is. It's on this disk. It plugs it in. The file manager says, oh, right, I'll go and get that information and I'll put it in the appropriate place in the computer's memory. Now, all of this is a very crude overview of the relationship between all of these managers. But this overview is just to get a clear idea that, you see, you've got all of these managers because you're decomposing the very large system that is an operating system. So we have a process manager that has policies that it takes care of, likewise all of the other managers, but they all cooperate with each other. And what I've tried to do here is to give you a feel for the type of cooperation that would take place. Now the diagram we're actually looking at here is showing us the core of an operating system, if you like, the guts of an operating system. We can see it has these four managers and we can see that they cooperate and they communicate with each other to allow the operating system to perform its various tasks. Now, sitting on top of all of this, we have a user interface. And we need to be clear here. This user interface could be a graphical user interface with lots of icons that we click on. It could be a command line where we type things in. So, for example, to print a file in a window-like environment, you would click on a printer icon and the file would get printed. In a console application, you would write print and then the name of the file. Now, regardless of the way in which you do that in the user interface, you can rest assured that you'll be making the same calls to the managers that are below. 
the fact that the user interfaces look different is really for the user of the operating system now this is not to underestimate the importance of a user interface it needs to be as user friendly as we can make it but we have to realize that the user interface is really nothing more than a portal if you like to all of the managers that lie below so a user interface is an important part of operating systems but in this playlist I'm really not going to be discussing the user interface what I'm really interested in is the core of operating systems which is the memory manager the file manager the device manager and the process manager and how they cooperate with each other and what the policies are for example for a process manager what the policies are for a memory manager so for example if you have a process executing and something happens and that process is stopped immediately to allow you to execute another process why has that other process started in, and why is one stopped well you might have a situation where one process has a higher priority and regardless as to what's running it might have the highest priority of all and it says right well I've got to run that one for whatever reason we'll discuss these kinds of things later but we really need to discuss the policies of all of the managers and realize yes the user interface is important but the study of operating system is really to do with the managers that you see below the user interface. So before we get to the end of this particular video, let's just revisit this particular diagram again. And let's realize that I'm going to take away the user interface and how it connects to all of the process managers. And say that this particular diagram here is key to the study of operating systems. What we have, we have all of the managers and we can see they all cooperate with one another. Now the next video is also going to show something referred to as a network manager but for the time being really this is one of the diagrams we need to take forward with us for our future studies of operating systems. Check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video.